We've been looking at the Christmas story, the birth of Christ, through the shepherds. Last week, we saw in Luke 2, where the heavens just opened and was filled with angels singing and praising God, giving glory to God in the highest. And the, the shepherds who were just on their job, keeping watch over the sheep, the flock by night, received an angelic visitation. And now this week, we are going to see that those shepherds, after the angels appeared, they felt compelled to go and visit the Christ that they were told about. So we hope that you will just uh, be blessed and enjoy uh, this morning's presentation.
Hey, how did the angel say it? This day in the city of David, a savior will be born unto you, Christ the Lord. Yes, and they said there would be a sign. The babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger.
the child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Can't get any better than that, right? Abigail Handley and Tyler and Tamiah Thomas, thank you so much. Well, are you ready for the word this morning? All right. Turn with me in the scriptures to the gospel of Luke. We're looking at the Christmas story through the eyes of the shepherd. And today's message is simply called King of Glory. Somebody shout glory. glory. Woo. In Luke's gospel chapter 2, let's begin in verse 13. It says, and suddenly, how many know he's a God of the suddenly? There was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men, peace to men and women doing the will of God. And then it says in verse 15, and it happened that as soon as the angels departed from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Indeed, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Oh, and they came with haste, and they sought out both Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. I want you to get a picture of this for just a moment. The sky is filled with multitudes, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe millions of angels singing glory, 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 glory to God in the highest. And then they all return back to heaven. And there was a compelling that came upon the shepherds. It's what I want to call number one, drawing power. They were drawn to go to Bethlehem. They were drawn to go see the Christ. They were drawn to go find out what it is that had been told them. As soon as the angels finished filling the air with praise, the shepherds were drawn to Christ. John chapter 12 and verse 32, Jesus says this, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself. You know, some people have what we like to call a drawing power, an attraction. When Tom Brady and the New England Patriots are playing in the NFL, the TV ratings go up. When Stephen Curry of the Golden State Warriors is on, on the NBA, more people are attracted to watch. Taylor Swift fills stadiums and has sold millions of her songs. They have what we would call a drawing power. But let me tell you, there's nobody that has a greater drawing power than Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Hallelujah. Now we all, we all think about it have someone in our life, in our family, in our neighborhood, at work, that we are praying for that they would be drawn closer to Christ. Well, when we lift him up. Come on, somebody. I said when we lift him up. When he is lifted up, his promise is he will draw our children. He will draw our families. He will 
draw our siblings. He will draw our parents. He will draw the unsaved to himself when he is lifted high. Who do you want God to draw closer to himself? I believe while we are here in service this morning, lifting him up, there is a magnetism of drawing, ah, going on like he did to the shepherds. They were compelled to go to Bethlehem and see the Christ. In James 4 and verse 8, James says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. When we take one step toward God, he will run toward us. Now, maybe you're sitting there today and you find yourself in a dry place. Maybe you feel like you're somewhat in a funk. Well, the shepherds were in the field, a dry place, and it was dark, it was night, they were alone. Yet the Lord drew them, and I believe if the Lord can draw them, the same God will draw you and I out of ourselves to a closer place with him. Who do we know that needs a divine interruption? Remember, the shepherds were just keeping watch over their flock by night. But the sky was filled with a host of angels singing and praising and worshiping the Christ. And all of a sudden, they were divinely interrupted. They had a divine intervention into their normal day, into their routine. How many of you know God knows where to find you? God knows how to break up your routine and your daily life. God knows how to bring you out of a funk. God knows how to cancel your dry place and bring you closer to him. Hallelujah. The drawing power of the Christ child is overwhelming nothing else like it and what God did for those shepherds he will do for you as well Amen. let's go to Matthew's gospel chapter 2 <coughs> Jesus is a little older now he's no longer in the manger but he's now with Mary and Joseph in a house. But like the shepherds, there were wise men. We're not sure if there were just three. The Bible doesn't say that. It says they brought three gifts. But they followed a star in the sky. And they were drawn. There's that drawing power again to Bethlehem, and they went to Herod, and they told him why they were there. And Herod, of course, said, hey, go and worship him, and then come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Not shepherd. Herod didn't want to worship Jesus. He wanted to kill him because he was jealous of another king. And so in verse 7 of Matthew 2, it says, Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, he inquired of them exactly what time the star appeared. 
And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again so that I may come and worship him also. And when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the child was. And seeing the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and they worshiped him. They fell down and they worshiped him. They fell down, come on, and they worshiped him. And opening their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, because he is king of kings, frankincense, incense, because he is worthy of our worship, and myrrh. Myrrh was actually a burial ointment, but it was a prophetic gift. And what they were saying to the Christ was even though you're still a child, you were born to die as the Savior of the world. Both shepherds and kings, common folks and some of the wisest, wealthiest of the earth had the same purpose. Both were drawn to Jesus to worship him. When the wise men showed up at the house, they didn't chit-chat. They didn't get into idle conversation. They didn't say, do you have anything to eat? They fell down on their, come on, on their faces and worshiped him. In the book of Revelation chapter 4, John gets a glimpse of what's going on up in heaven. And as he gets caught up into the heavens in Revelation 4, 8, it says, And each one of the four living creatures had six wings about him, and within being full of eyes, and they had no rest day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God, the Almighty, who was, come on, who is, and who is to come. And whenever the living creatures gave glory and honor and thanks to him, who sat on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fell down before the one sitting on the throne and they worshiped him who lives forever and ever and they threw their crowns before the throne saying, verse 11, O Lord, you are worthy. Somebody say, Lord, you are worthy. Come on, say it again. Lord, you are worthy, 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 worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you created all things. And then this next line is what I want you to get. And he says to you and to me, and you and I, were created for the Lord's pleasure. Come on. God doesn't need anything. But let me tell you what he wants. 
He wants our worship. He wants our praise. First of all, there is a drawing power that the shepherds experienced, that the wise men experienced, that you and I experience as well. And number two, we are drawn to him for a divine purpose. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Somebody give God a shout of praise. You were created for the Lord's pleasure. We were created to worship him. You and I were not saved to sit. We were saved to praise. We were saved to worship. We were saved to serve. We were saved to give God glory. What's the difference between the angels and us? We have a free will. The Bible says there's going to be a day that every knee's going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. But I don't want to wait till I have to praise him. Let's do it now when we get to praise him. Hallelujah. You are on God's heart this Christmas. I believe that. You're always on God's heart. And you know, when somebody celebrates a birthday, we often like to find out what it is they want so that we can bless them. Sometimes we even ask them, what would you like for your birthday? What can I get for you? What can I give to you? I know Christmas is coming and we buy and we receive gifts from one another. But how many know it's the Lord's birthday? Why don't we ask him what he wants for Christmas? Why don't we ask Jesus, what can I give you, Lord, for your birthday? I believe what he wants is our praise. I believe you and I can give him the gift of worship. It's our purpose. It's why we were created. Like the shepherds were drawn from the field to go to the, to the manger. Like the wise men followed the star and were drawn to the house. They all did the same thing when they saw Jesus. They fell down and they worshiped him. We read in Revelation that the elders and the people are around the throne day and night no rest. I hope you don't get tired of praising him down here on earth because when we get to heaven, we're going to give him praise throughout all eternity. He is the king of glory. Go to Psalm 24 with me. Psalm 24 The psalmist says in verse 7, Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. You and I 
are gatekeepers to God's presence on the earth. You and I are doors that either can remain closed or when we praise him can open up and welcome the king of glory into our lives, into the atmosphere. Who is this king of glory? I'll tell you who he is. He's the Lord. He's strong and mighty. And let me tell you, when he shows up, he's going to come in power and come and fight our battles for us. He's the Lord, mighty in battle. Now in the New Testament, when God wants to emphasize something, he'll often begin the verse by verily, and then he'll say it again, verily. In other words, listen up, take note, make sure you underscore what I'm about to say. Put a star beside this. Circle it. Make sure you get this. Verily, verily. Well, here in Psalm 24, God doesn't just say verily, verily. He takes the whole two verses that he just said, and he says them again. In other words, we better get it. Verse 9, lift up your heads. Oh, you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? He's the Lord of hosts. That word hosts means he has multitudes, millions of angels that can praise him. But let me tell you who he wants praise from, from us, from you and me. That's our purpose. That's why we were created. Can I tell you that if you do nothing else today but give him praise, you will have fulfilled the will of God for your life. this king of glory he's the lord of hosts he is the king of glory and then he says selah pause meditate think about this make sure you get it paul said i wish i would that men everywhere would lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting and give the Lord the worship that he is worthy of. That is our divine purpose as believers on the earth today. And when we fulfill our purpose, he promises two things. First of all, he'll draw you closer to himself. And then he will draw all men and women. He will draw those in our life that we want to have a close. Come on, has anybody got a son or a daughter or a grandchild or a parent or a sibling or a next door neighbor or a coworker? Somebody that you want to see draw closer to God. Give him about 30 seconds of a shout of praise and watch what God will do. Hallelujah. Glory. King of glory. Come in. Woo! Woo! That is the will of God for your life. Praise him. In this holy season of Christmas, 
Give him the worship he is so deserving and worthy of. Now go back to Matthew 2. After the wise men came into the house and they fell down to worship him, it says in verse 12, remember Herod said, go and worship him and then come back and let me know where he is. But it says in verse 12 of Matthew 2, they were warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. So they departed into their own country a different way. They took a different path. They left differently than the way they came. I truly believe that after you and I are drawn with his power to come and after we fulfill our divine purpose and give him worship, I truly believe that when we spend time in his presence, that you and I will leave a different way. We will leave a different path. Psalm 16 in verse 11, the psalmist says, you will show me, I like this, the path of life. I don't know about you, but I want to I wanna leave on the path of life. I want to leave on the path of blessing. I want to leave on the path of favor. I want to leave on the path of healing and health. I want to leave on the path of prosperity. He will show you the path of life. And in his presence, there is fullness. I believe there's everything we need. Fullness of joy. And at your right hand, Lord, there are pleasures forevermore. Now, if that means a different path than the one you are on right now, are you willing to make a change? Are you willing to go a different way? Sometimes we get into a routine. Sometimes we fall into the mundane. Sometimes we just do the same thing over and over and over, and then we want things to be different. If things are going to be different, we have to take a different path. So many Christians, even though they've accepted Christ even though the Lord is in their hearts, they're still searching for something. They're still feeling like they have no purpose. They're still feeling unfulfilled. Is that you? My prayer is first of all, you and I will sense the drawing power and presence of the Lord in this Christmas season. And then we will fulfill our divine purpose for which we were created, and we will give him praise and worship. We will fall down and give the Lord for his birthday, for his Christmas, the present he wants, he wants our praise. Amen. And then, as we spend time in his presence, it will change us. It will transform us. We are changed from glory to glory to glory to glory by the Spirit the presence of the Lord. I want to leave differently 
than the way I came in. What are you believing for? God has a purpose for your life. Don't say you're too old. Don't say you missed it. Don't say it can't happen. God has a purpose for you. The Lord wants you to be fulfilled. He wants you to be happy and blessed. He wants you to sense his presence and peace this Christmas season like never before. In Psalm 20 and verse 4, this is my prayer for you. Psalm 20 and verse 4, may the, may the Lord grant you according to your heart's desire and may he fulfill all of your purpose. Isn't that good? May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all of your purpose. Choose a different path this Christmas season, away from the routine, away from the distractions, away maybe even from that person or those things that intimidate you and that are trying to hinder you from drawing closer to God. Those wise men, they left a different way than the way they came. Today, my prayer is that when you leave this service this morning, you will leave different than the way you came in. Let's all stand up.